Hello YouTube, this is The Avenging Crusader and we are back for episode 65 of Europa Universalis 3. Let's play as the Hansa. And as you can see, we are just kind of messing around in Germany and Northern Europe and we're not really doing anything here. We're just sitting with our four armories of 15,000 scaring Lunenburg out of their bloody goddamn minds because they're like, holy crap, we are surrounded by gray. But enough about that. Uh, last episode, we managed to conquer most of Mutapa, but we decided not to annex them because it would be more efficient to take a crap load of money from them, as you can see. And I'm actually going to use this money right now to form a center of trade down here in Great Karoo. Because as you can see, these currently trade through Lubeck, which is nice, except that Lubeck uh, is currently infested with people who are not us. And the thing with Monopoly is... If you hold the monopoly, you get free, um, you get increased income from the empty slots in a center of trade. So a center of trade has uh, 20 free slots when it's first created. A monopoly counts as six, and everything below that obviously is uh, however many it is. So all of these actually add up to 20. So you got six and four is 10, and three is 13, and two is 15, and then you have five random ones, and that may, adds up to 20. But as a. Uh, you know, as our current change, we changed last episode to an administrative republic. We're going to be efficient with our administration here. And we are going to split Lubeck's uh, current value uh, with its random trade through Africa. And we're going to uh, not only get our provinces in Africa trading through their own center of trade, where other people may or may not be able to trade. And if they do, they won't be as effective because we get more merchants than pretty much any of the game at this point, pretty much, because we have so many centers of trade. Our plutocracy is so efficient, and we are, uh, you know, we just get a base value too. So that's uh, that's nice. But we'll be able to beat out the competition if we form our own center of trade down here in Great Karoo. So in order to form a center of trade, move out of the way, won't move. In order to form a center of trade here, you have to uh, have a national focus affecting the province. Uh, either the province that you want to make it in or next to the province you want to make it in. So if we made... Great crew, our national focus, we can put it in Rageveld. I Rageveld? 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 Yeah, that thing. But um, I think the, probably the best place to stick it would be somewhere in here in our newly conquered Mutapa. Because I would like it to cover as much of Africa as possible. And if we put it farther north, then it will cover more of this uh, northern area that we can't quite see all of, but it's still there, I assure you. Uh, pretty much everything to the right of my cursor here is colonized or owned by someone. Right about there. So uh, all these people could theoretically start trading through us instead of their current uh, center of trade of Suakin and uh, Alexandria. And I don't know why Castile put a center of trade in Suakin and Alex when Alex Alexandria is only three provinces away. That's just stupid. See, what we're doing is we're putting it literally a continent away. You know, that's, you know, that's quite a long distance. You know, that's from the northern part of Europe to the southern part of Africa. That's a long-ass distance. So we're, what we're doing is we're making it more efficient. But what uh, Castile did was they just split up their uh, centers of trade here in Alexandria, which was the original one owned by Mamluks. Uh, and they screwed themselves over there because now they have to send twice as many merchants to cover pretty much the same amount of territory. So that might help them out a little bit, I guess, if they're super mercantilist and they have, can afford to send tons of merchants. But it's not as good as uh, having concentrated centers of trade, in my personal opinion. I believe that it works out better for me that way. So what we're going to do, I think we're going to do it right here in um, Zumbo. Because that's a nice looking territory. It has ivory. Uh, and the best part is our uh, national focus here will mean that these four territories will have less revolt risk in addition to being able to form the uh, center of trade there. You know, that's pretty much the best we can do unless we put in Sofala. And if we put it in Sofala, then uh, Mutapa will be able to have a second causes belly in addition to the what they already have, which is Reconquest on us because we own a whole bunch of their cores. But they also get, um, what is it? Uh, I don't know, it's like a, it's not boundary dispute but it's like um your opponents are centering their focus near our borders i think it's called border dispute or border friction or something like that i think it's border friction actually but if we put it in zumbo 
It covers the same amount as Masapa or Sofala would in the sense of four territories, but Zumbo is not adjacent to Barwe or Zimbabwe. So therefore, it will not give them border friction. So we're just going to go ahead and make Zumbo our national focus, and we're going to go ahead and make center of trade here. And for some reason, there we go. Okay, sometimes it won't let you do that, and it'll just mess up. And if you click on Zumbo, it'll be like, still trades through Lubeck. But then if you click on Senna, or, you know, somewhere nearby, and then click on Zumbo, it'll trade through Zumbo normally. But as you can see, we got our little money bags there. Zumbo is now an official center of trade, and it has zero right now, but it will uh, bounce back up to whatever it will actually be as soon as the month rolls over, I believe. So we'll go ahead and let it go for a month, and then we'll check back momentarily. But right now, we need to send a colonist somewhere. Where is a good spot? Right there, Chippewa. There you go. Get moving. All right, we're at exactly eight infamy. Well, uh, eight point oh eight, but you know it's close enough. So uh, that's uh, that's the same amount we would have had if we had annexed them. We would have accrued eight infamy, so it would have been slightly more than that. But we're still well below our limit, so that's not really a problem. Uh, we formed the center of trade, so I think we're good to go with that. And the only thing left to do at the moment is get ready to invade uh, Saudi Arabia and go from there into India because I believe that we can get a lot of land in India very very easily because I don't think that they've unified into Hindustan uh, which is one of the formable nations as you can see you know as Germany as a German state we have the opportunity to form the German nation uh, but the uh, the several of the uh, nations that play in India have the option to form Hindustan, which is, uh, you know, it's a pretty powerful nation if it manages to form. It'll probably, I don't know if it'll be a match for Bohemia with all the vassals, but if Bohemia was by itself, it'd definitely be able to crush it, you know, just because they have so much land, so much manpower, and it's actually really rich. So they'll have lots of cash as well. Their technology will be crap, and it'll probably stay crap for most of the game, but it's still very powerful, and they have crap loads of units that they can send. So, uh,. You guys can just go ahead and go to... I'm going to have to bring another army over, actually. Do I have cores down here, anyway? I do have a little crew. Excellent. I'm going to build another army of 8,000 men to cover the southern uh, part of Africa that we have now, just in case random rebels pop up. They shouldn't, because the, uh, the revolts are very low, except for Great Crew, which I believe we seized from Portugal. Yeah, we seized that from Portugal at some point. But besides that, you know, really not a whole lot of revolts going on. But up, as you can see up here in our newly conquered territories, there are tons of revolts that are going to be happening. But I would still like to have an army down south just in case Portugal gets uppity and they decide to declare war or something. Or, you know, we want to go kill natives over here on this side of Africa. We don't have to march all the way around the Cape. It would be slightly more efficient than having one giant 16,000-man army. And uh, we are all about efficiency. It's about playing the game smarter, not harder. All right, here we go. And we have a missionary. But we are going to do uh, Germany at the moment. Because I would prefer not to have too many revolts in our newly conquered territories until that second army is ready to go. And missionaries, as I'm sure you know, increase revolt risk. All right, we no longer trade in slaves or ivory. Because Lubeck just lost a whole bunch of value. Oh no, it didn't. That's weird. But um, we now trade through Zumbo. Please hurry up and get to the end of the month. Thank you. Okay, so Zumbo is now worth uh, 265. And that's not a whole lot, honestly. It could be worth a lot more. Uh, you know, uh, Great Britain here is trading through Suakin up here. I don't know why. Maybe because Steel paid them a whole bunch of cash, but whatever. We will have an absolute monopoly on this, except maybe if Mutapa starts uh, sending merchants, or Congo does, or maybe some stupid trading nation like um, probably Munster will, just to just to be douches they'll be like hey we're gonna send merchants down there and just piss you off probably will done tons of other stuff they just keep sponsoring rebels uh, mission oh sent the missionary any colonists sent somewhere where should you go? I already sent one to chip one everybody else is pretty much done so it's a good time to start on a new batch let's go ahead and get this uh, territory here couldn't find the click button couldn't find the button to click on there we go. Alright, so yeah, like I said, we are going to try to expand into Yemen, especially since we have this core on Mocha, which is quite nice. It's actually going to expire in four years, so that's pretty crazy. We've actually managed to let that sit there 
for almost 45 years without going to war for them uh, with them over Mocha. So, uh, you know, it'll be nice to have that, especially since, uh, you know, these are just barely cores. We could start building an army here as well, but uh, we're not getting tons of cash, you know. I'm going to wait till stability is up, and then we'll start getting a little bit more. But uh, it would be really nice, it would be really, really nice to start conquering more of Yemen, and especially uh, moving up towards uh, where Persia probably is if the Timurids have collapsed. Still don't know about the Timurids yet. Because I uh, I set the spread of provinces late, I think, on the options. So we don't know about Timurids yet, even 200 years in the game. Don't know that there's Timurids over here. I know there are. I know there were at some point. There might be Persia now. And uh, I know there's India over here, and that's crazy rich. So we're going to go try and uh, eat them up. That's the strategy. All right, so you guys can start hunting rebels. Uh, you're self-sustaining. Excellent. But I don't have a magistrate for you. But we are getting more magistrates now because we are a administrative for public instead of points. I think it was point .4. Uh, it was, now it's uh, up to 1. Or it might have been point .6. Either way, it's better than it was as a merchant republic, which means we build more, build more shit and uh, make better use of it. All right. And our cultural tradition is absolute crap because we have not um, used a magistrate on it in ages but I think what we should do is support Baroque music because, uh, oh, we can't. We need a fine arts uh, academy somewhere. But that does a whole bunch of good things. Specifically, the main thing is that it gives you yearly cultural tradition of plus five, which is crazy good. And revolt risk goes down by three everywhere, which is insane. And uh, Commedia del Art Performances. I think I finally said that right, although if a slightly Frenchy accent. Uh, you know, that's also good. Still using that. But it only lasts for four years, and it's really expensive. So maybe you don't need to use that as much. Um, as for this, we'll be able to cancel it in two years. And that's all that's going on. So let's go ahead and, after freaking 12 minutes of me blathering on about random crap, let's go ahead and get started. And we are still trading lucratively. I like it. We're getting cores everywhere. How many forts we got? Still a lot of forts. Where do we have cores? Yeah, look at that. All this uh, solid green, this is where we have cores. So uh, we've either conquered this with the Reconquest, like we did on uh, Cayuga and Onondaga, or we've just uh, had it for 50 years. So that's pretty crazy. And I think it's really, really funny that we actually managed to uh, get uh, Newfoundland before we actually got... Um, I th oh my goodness. Is this Newfoundland? My uh, my geography is completely screwed. I know that this is now part of Canada, and uh, we we colonized parts of Canada before we colonized uh, Greenland. That's pretty funny, because historically it did not happen that way. Uh, you know, most of this coastline, uh, pretty much all that coastline, actually, all the way down, and some of this coastline is going to be cored soon. And uh, for whatever reason, we have Huamanga. We must have got a border dispute or something. Uh, boundary dispute, and we got uh, Little Korea, which I remember we did have a boundary dispute on Portugal for, and uh, these two because we conquered them ages ago. And as you can see, we got stripey lines on Mocha because we want to conquer that, so we will work towards getting that. But we can reduce uh, maintenance by quite a bit because we're not at war with anyone. Don't intend on being at war with anyone for a while. And uh, Castile is at war with Ethiopia. Ethiopia. There we go. We got all the merchants we need over here. And Mutaba is being silly. Get out of here, Mutaba. Can't have my trade. Got lots of revolts. Lots and lots of revolts. That's to be expected. But they will be easily dealt with, I promise you, because these guys just got pointy sticks. Even on half morale, we will still easily deal with them. Are you not on Hunt Rebels? You're probably on Hunt Rebels, because these guys came all the way from Mohawk. It's a bit silly. Just that one. Oh, and it's giving me this low ma low maintenance uh, thing because we're at war with uh, Kazan. Fat lot of good that's going to do you. They only got one territory left, and Bohemia's almost colonized it by now. But uh, they still have not uh, actually gotten peace with these guys because they're actually taking the land. So they will not get any imperial authority from that, for which I am very thankful. Right, with our maintenance now, we're actually getting quite a crap load of cash per month and quite a lot at the end of the year for a whole lot per year, which is really nice. 
Uh, it won't stay up in wartime because we'll have to increase the maintenance, obviously. But during times of peace, that is really nice. Uh, let's go ahead and send a colonist to uh, somewhere over here on the coastline, like right there. I should really bring my fleet around. Oh, I remember where the fleet is. It's in Portugal. Oh, it wasn't Portugal. Where are you guys? Ha, noob. There they are. Found ya. Alright, these guys need to come over and uh, go right there. About so, why are you not docked up? Go dock up. You're gonna hurt yourselves. Uh, I'm gonna build a bark, a couple of barks. And these guys will take a year to build, but we're gonna use them to make sure that pirates do not spawn up here where they've been spawning and over here where they've been spawning. That means that we will get, instead of freaking 0.36 from this colony, we'll get something more along the lines of 1.72, except that it'll be more because it's salt instead of freaking grain. So it'll be more along the lines of, you know, 5.7, which would be quite nice. Not counting the actual trade benefit we get from it. All right, build another fort. And where should we send a missionary? Somewhere in Europe. We got two more in Germany. Coolio. See, these guys are being sent over. I actually need to grab this fleet real quick. Come back here. Damn it, random uprising. Alright, we're going to take these guys over to... Mozambique's had two revolts already. That's crazy. Uh, we're going to take these guys. That's nice. To uh, Azores. Because Azores is going to be converted. And I really, 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 really hate when there are revolts on islands because I have to get a navy to move specifically to that island and drop troops off so it's much oh cool extra tax uh, it's much easier just to leave an army there while you're converting than pick it up when you're done as long as there's as long as it stays at zero revolt risk you don't need an army there but if you are converting then it's probably a good idea to stick one there so that you don't have to mess with it later all right these guys are uh, taking a little bit of attrition so we're just going to chill out for a little bit and uh, get it back and then go over to the next island. We get free uh, colonists in Tonkawa and we're gonna go ahead and keep our uh, keep our ruler. His military is bad but as I said in the previous video that's really not so important in an empire as big as ours unless we get into a war with someone who's equally powerful or uh, more powerful than we are. And we're discovering stuff. We still need to get Baja down here but uh, we'll get that. I think that's Baja. Maybe? Maybe? I don't know. Doesn't matter. As I've said before, my geography is not the best. I can uh, probably tell you what continent you're on, but not much else most of the time. I get a general outline of things, but not uh, not tons of information about them. All right, so you guys need to go all the way around and kill those dudes. Still, oh. Not that many forts left to build. I like that. Very close to being done with the forts. And when we're done with the forts, we won't actually ever be done with the forts as long as we keep colonizing. But when we're done with the forts for the moment, and I'll probably just, you know, do them in batches of five after we catch up. Uh, we are going to start... Thank you for the extra magistrates. I like them. We are going to start um, building colleges. And I'll explain why in the next video, because we're actually... Uh, we got 10 minutes left. I'd rather just keep playing in this one because we actually haven't got much done. But I'll explain it. They are actually very, very useful in the long run of the game. I actually had a guy kicked out of Lubeck. So what we're going to do is we're going to send a whole bunch of merchants and knock these dudes out. As you can see, we're only down a 50% chance somehow. I don't know why that is. Usually it's pretty high since, you know, we own Lubeck and we're mercantilists, but whatever. Yeah, give me a merchant. You can use that merchant. Go there. Beat him out. But uh, like I said, the college is very useful because it can be used to increase your magistrate count. So uh, I guess, you know, you could consider that a game breaker, you know, because you can build a whole lot more buildings and it's a little bit more unrealistic. But uh, the point of a uh, alternative history simulator is to form alternative history so I mean 
since when was in the history books that the tiny trading uh, cooperative known as the Hanseatic League not only formed a military uh, and took over parts of northern Germany, but they managed to find the Americas before anybody else and colonize pretty much freaking everything. Well, that didn't happen, did it? So, uh, you know, already broke with the realism. Not really going to try to stick with it now. Although we could do that. If, uh, if there are requests to do that, I could definitely try. Uh, I've already got one request to keep Germany to its traditional borders, and I will try to do that. Uh, as faithfully as possible. Because, as has been mentioned, a uh, form of Germany that does not look like Germany looks like crap. I would like to have my borders look nice and neat up in Germany where it's more about representation than actual physical power. Because our power is coming from Americas. Alright, so we killed all the pirates. Are our barks ready yet? Yes. No, they're not. Damn it. And we already have pirates back down here. I just got off of that. God dang it. Alright, let's leave a Caraval here. We're the weakest one. And we're going to hang out for the rest of the month and repair real quick. And then we're going to beat up the pirates again. Goodness, they're spawning before my eyes. Oh, you need to go get him first and then these guys. There you go. Very, very close to being done with the forts, guys. I like it. We have a colonist. Where should we go? Where should you go? You can go to Yaki. Yaki. Yaki, Yaki, Wakoi. Not a problem. We are still handling these revolts with a uh, minimum of uh, necessity. And um, where is this army that needs 6,000 men? It's probably on the Azores, I bet. No, it's not. That's weird. Where are you, crazy army? Armies. There you are. Oh. Ah. That's where they are. They're in Portugal. I left them in Portugal. Oh, boy. Well, they're going to have to kind of chill out in Portugal for a minute. Because my navy's elsewhere. And I still need to build another one. I don't think I ever did that. I should probably get on that next video. <coughs> Excuse me. Bit of a scratchy throat, but this is the last video, so it won't be much of an issue. Only got a couple more minutes to go. And, uh, you know, killing pirates. That's what we do. There we go. Now the go to button works. Alright, you need to go chill out there. And drop off a bark. Or a caravel, I mean. And the rest of you fools need to go ahead this a ways. Jump across. And then go to Portugal. So we can get that army out of harm's way. When do we get stability next? Uh, this year. That is absolutely wonderful. We discovered Kilwa. Nice. That's uh, owned by Great Britain. Good for them. They got 6,000 men there. That's kind of intimidating. Well, you got 6,000 dudes there. You're scaring me. Oh, we've discovered the Northwest Territories. That's pretty cool. They're actually really big. As you can imagine. So, uh, the map isn't completely... Uh, perfect, you know, it doesn't cover, you know, the majority of Greenland. Actually, Greenland's quite a bit bigger. It's like this. But, uh, it covers, you know, what was colonized and or seen or and or discovered by people at the time period. So, you know, we hadn't actually gone all the way to the uh, North Pole or the South Pole. At least not in, you know, organized scientific divisions that were state-sponsored and honestly recorded. Oh. Banner dispute on Muscovy. Well, the problem with that is we're allied with Muscovy. And they would be a really good ally if we ever went to war with Bohemia again, because they would smack up on this half of Bohemia. And since they're not directly, you know, accessible by Bohemia's vassals, they'd be largely untouched by the vassals, and they'd be able to concentrate their entire army on this point. So we're just not going to take it. Normally, I would definitely take that. But we need them as an ally more than we need one territory up here in Russia. You know, nothing against Russia, but we just don't need their territory right now. Cool. Cheaper ships, I like it. Converting people, also nice. Uh, also need to convert more people. Specifically, not Lunaberg. I'd love to convert you, because you're Catholic, but uh, we don't own you yet. Yet being an operative word. I'm planning on it. 
and uh, send one to Azor since we have the army there now. Good deal. So their revolt risk is still at zero, which is cool. But uh, still nice to have that guy there just in case the uh, freaking monster starts acting up again. Never seen them do that. They just start acting like freaking morons all the time. Sinaloa. Good for you. Well, we've got one going there already. And we can send one here, I guess. But I'd rather send one there. To finish up the coastline. Lucrative trade. Give me cash. I like it. More forts. Where's the forts? Getting 611 a year. That's insane. And uh, we got a dude in... Uh, Oh my goodness, we're getting so many of those lucrative trade events. I don't think I've ever gotten this many. Mutapa is doing their thing, where they kind of just chill there. And uh, our truce with them expires shortly, in uh, three years. Because uh, three years is a short time, obviously. At least in a game with the scope of 400 years. It's uh, relatively short. We have another colonist. Where do we want to send him? How about right there? Why not? And uh, sorry that I'm not doing a whole bunch of uh, Yemen punching at the moment. But I promise you that we will get into that. I just want to get these forts out of the way so that we can start spamming colleges. So uh, that will definitely be done. The forts are very, very close to being done. So if not this video, they'll probably be done next video. And stability's up, finally. Which means we can invest in government again. And we need to stop getting inflation and we can afford to uh, lose a little bit of money per month to get our inflation down and it's really you know 3.5 that's really not much of a difference but um, you know the less you have the faster your tech goes up and uh, our strategy here is all about tech the faster we get to good tech the faster we can freaking conquer the world because one of the techs is really, really important. And that is this one. Cabinet. Infamy minus one. That means that every year your infamy goes down by one. No matter what else happens, your infamy will always go down by one per year. So even if your ruler is an absolute crap level three diplomat, you'll still lose one uh, infamy a year. So, you know, this allows you to conquer a whole crap level more territory. But it requires you to have level 30 government tech. So the idea is to rush for that government tech, you know, while acquiring as much land as we can peacefully. Uh, but we want to rush for that government tech so that we can snag it, and then we can start conquering people like crazy. All right, so we have missionaries, and everywhere else, I believe, is uh, being missionized. Have missionaries on it. Yeah. Yeah, blue everywhere, no green. So let's go ahead and send them to uh, the trouble area down here. Because by the time they are converted... Now, the revolt risk will have gone down anyways. And since we have an army there, it won't be much of a problem. All right, these guys are done, which is excellent. They can start hunting rebels, and we are converting people. So, uh, hey, what is the meaning of this? Portugal! Quit messing around. i kick you out, my friend. We have, uh, how many more forts we got? Not too many. Not too many. We're working on it. All right, we're in a very good situation right now. Stability is up to plus three. We managed to change our government type last video to Administrative Republic, which is a lot better. Uh, we can cancel our mission, yeah? What do we get now? Build University. Great. Well, the great thing about this is, since we just canceled it, uh, it's actually better to f just do it. Because by the time we'll be able to cancel it, you know, since it takes five years to build a university... It'll be done by the time, you know, we'll be able to cancel the mission. So we'll get a university out of the deal and a philosopher that someone will buy. Very little cash, but, you know, we'll end up with a university, so who cares. Uh, but that's in, what, Cartagena? All right, so as soon as we get another magistrate, we'll go ahead and do that. We're getting three a year. How crazy is that? One every four months. That's, uh, that's, not, that's not hugely good, but it's still better than it was at the beginning of the game by absolute tons. All right, so these guys need a fort, though. Oh, Coolio. Since our um, since our leader has uh, nine diplomacy, occasionally you get that awesome event I just showed you that says um, competent diplomacy and you lose two infamy. So that's really cool. We're actually ready to go to war again with uh, someone else. 
Maybe a doll would be a good candidate. Do we have Holy War? No. Obviously, because we're not defender of the faith. Who is? Great Britain is defender of Protestant faith. Cool. I like that, because that means if anyone declares war on us, Great Britain will most likely come to our side. So we don't want to seize that. Not only because of that, but also because, um, you know, trade and production cost modifier goes down. Which doesn't mean that you get less money from that. It means your technology is harder to research. But what we can do is we can go ahead and get this war started with uh, Yemen. Since they are being invaded by Iraq. So, uh, you know, Iraq up here, they're fairly big. They're probably about the same size as Yemen. And they will make it very, very easy for us to get Mocha back. And uh, we're going to declare war with Holy War. And take everything but... Oh, we can't. we got to take Mocha first. Alright, we're going to take Mocha first. Balls. Yeah, I guess we're going to have to take Mocha first. Since our core will expire there. Actually, I don't know. Hold up. Uh, I think if we go to war with them with Holy War and then conquer it but don't seize it then it will stay a core for another 50 years so i'll have to research that uh real quick but our uh time for the day is up i've made two videos today and i need to take a nap because it is fairly late at night my friends i hope you enjoyed the video today if you uh if you did please leave me a comment it lets me know that you care it gives me a warm fuzzy feeling deep down in my toes i don't know why i chose my toes that's uh not normally where I get fuzzy feelings. But anyways, comments are nice. I love it when you guys leave me comments. Uh, ratings are nice too. They help me out a lot. As do likes and favorites if you choose to do so. But obviously you're not forced to. I'm not going to make you do anything you don't want to do just for the sake of making me a cooler YouTuber. Although the more popular I get, the more videos I'm going to make. So guys, I really hope you liked the video today. And I will see you some other time. Thanks for watching.